grow, to continue to pursue, seek Jesus, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one ever go by him through the Father. And I believe that this message is going to be a beautiful message, a great way to close the year of 2022. And our last service, we are going to come back on January 1st, and man, God going to continue to pursue, guide us, to help us through this journey. And before we get into the announcement and, and the message, I want to ask about James and I'll, I'll open up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything. We thank you for Jesus. He is King. He is Lord. We thank you for his sacrifice and his resurrection. And we just thank you for another beautiful day. Hope you give us another one tomorrow. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, um, today we're going to be doing our annual candlelight ceremony towards the end. And, and if you guys know, um, today we will be closing our sermon series on faith, hope, and love. And man, it's just it's been an amazing journey the past uh, whole month of December with my birthday and the other day banquet. I know Abby and her husband Saul, they did an amazing ministry that they come to share, you know, about gifts. And I know that Abby and Saul, they're very young, they're only like in their 20s though, but the good Lord is going to open doors to guide them and to, to minister throughout the valley. And Abby and Saul, I know we're going to be seeing you guys later on again next year. And as you guys know, we are going to be closing today's service though. And so on December 25th, we're not going to have service, but Ariana is going to be doing a Christmas greeting video that day. So Ariana is going to be posting a video, and then also we're going to have Michaela on June 1st. going to be, I mean, January 1st, is going to be doing another video on the New Year greeting. And we are going to do a new series called Fresh Start. And so we're going to have a lot of different activities and plan what we're going to be doing next year. Um, so but God is so good, and His, His grace continues to enable us to keep our our faith. And so today we get to our message, but today we're going to go on our, our closing series, what, we, what we've been having conversation about on gifts. You know, everybody likes it to receive a gift. It can be wedding, birthday, anniversary, special occasion. You know, when you receive that gift, the first thing in your mind, you start getting curious, you know, with that gift. You know, you want to open that gift, you know, it, it, it might be something meaningful or it can be something about, you know, the thought that counts. And I really want to focus on this, on this message and this treasure and, and, and we get ready to close this series and today we're going to be talking about the gift of love and i believe that love is so vital in, in our hearts that it continues to to help us grow what is love and what, what, how we live with love and we're going to go into our scripture today i just feel that i want to preach on just one uh, scripture today so let's see here and let's just get my my sermon. So we're going to go to Luke chapter 2, verse 7. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. You know, when we think about the, the, his, the history, we think about, you know, Jesus. You know, we have so many questions. If Jesus is the King of Kings, and the Lord, Lord, he is just the name above all names. But how is it that God allowed this, you know, um, this place that Jesus would be, be born in a filthy, you know, unclean manger? And, and, and when I, I was looking at the scripture very carefully, that he was wrapped and he was placed in a manger with the, with the wise man and Mary and, and Joseph, because I believe that Jesus specialized um, excuse me, yeah, because Jesus uh, knows that we, we don't have access to the palace. We don't, we're, not, we're not royal material. Uh, many times that we don't have luxury to, to step into something, you know, fancy, but Jesus knows our heart. We may be unclean and dirty, but Jesus understands how you feel being there in the manger. And I feel that that love that Mary had to tell her mother carries a child, that love, that this unconditional love. And we're going to continue here. And we're going to say, um, love changes the world. Love changes the world. And I believe that God specializes in hidden treasure. Every one of you have a purpose. See, when God used individual people for his purpose, see, for example, God hid Joseph in the prison. God hid Moses in the, in the Midian. 
God hid Elijah in a cave. God hid John the Baptist in the wilderness. And, and see, God used some individual men for his purpose, for the love that what he, he gave for all people. Maybe you're here right now listening to me go, like, maybe you're in a place right now, you, you, you feel unhappy, you feel like, why is this happening to me? But that we trust in him because love changes the world. See, a lot of times that we go through scenarios in life, we, we go through circumstances that we can't comprehend, but yet God understands our heart. God understands because the Bible says in First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, that no eyes are seen, no ears are heard, no human mind can't conceive, but God prepares for those who love him. And Romans 8, 37, that for all be favor more than conquered for him that love us. First John 4, 18, that perfect love will cast out fear. See, we don't need to be afraid. Mary and Joseph, when, when they brought uh, the baby into the manger, they were not afraid. They were living with faith. They were, they, were living, they were living with hope. And I believe, young people, this is an opportunity. But when we reflect that the Christmas season, I know Christmas, you know, it's about, you know, gifts and families and gathering. You know, it's about, you know, um, time to spend with loved ones. But we, we won't forget the true message of Christmas that Jesus, uh, who was born the day that we celebrate, the day that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who came to 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 affect us, to adopt us into the family. And let's go ahead and and, and continue here. Now, um, James, read First John three fifteen. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down His life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. See, the Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, But God who demonstrated his great love towards us, when we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's why in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if we confess our mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in that he risen from the dead, that we are saved. Imagine that being a baby in a manger, that living for 30 plus years, knowing that, that you know, Jesus gave his, his, his life, his heart for us. The Bible says in John 15, 13, a greater love, have no one in this and lay down his life for his friend. Because I believe that when we seek his purpose and, and, and we love one another, that his love is, is great in our hearts. And today I want to give some points. I want to talk about the, I want to be talking about the four uh, keynotes in my sermon. And I think we're going to be focusing on the letter R. Because Jesus is my redeemer. Now I have a beautiful dream that I was sitting in the in the table, and I was sitting with uh, Pastor Mark and his son Nathaniel. So when I was sitting at the table, and and I was looking around this, you know, and, and, and I don't know if it was a hotel, it was like a room, and, and I, I sent a text message to Pastor. I have a dream, Pastor, beautiful dream. So we're sitting down, and we started singing, "You are my redeemer," and I thought Pastor he he took a flute. And I believe that you are my redeemer. We have redemption through Christ. We don't have to be afraid. I want to focus on the four key letters, the letter R. I want to focus on the letter R. And the first letter on the letter R we're going to be talking about is receiving Christ and his forgiveness. Now, we all are, are unworthy. We all don't, we don't deserve Jesus. We're all dirty. We're all filthy sinners. The Bible says in Revelation that we are filthy rats to him. But the Bible says in Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 that he's knocking on the door of your heart. Invite him into your heart. John chapter 9 verse 5. As long as I'm in the world, I'm a light of the world. You know, in the book of John and the, the gospel of John have so many scriptures on love. Because John is a, is a sample of love. You go back to Acts chapter 3. There is uh, there's Peter and, 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 and there was John. Now, Peter and John were walking, and, and Acts chapter 3, they saw a man laying on, on the gate. And I think they say that silver and gold, what well, we don't have, but we have is Jesus of Nazareth. Now, if you look carefully at those two characters in Acts chapter 3, that John represents love. And then Peter represents faith. You remember Matthew chapter 14, that when Peter stepped out of a boat, he was, he was a, a faith walker, not a dry boat talker. Now imagine that love and faith that care of this man was laying on the gate, chapter, I mean, Acts chapter 
free. And I think that John, John the Apostle was, was, was a symbol of love. And so when we need to receive Christ, I remember when I was 17 years old, in May 22nd, 2007, when I was received Jesus, I was just a baby. We were just spiritual, spiritual baby. We were just, you know, newborn in Christ. We've been born again through Christ. And when we got, I got older, I started learning to crawl. I started learning to, about the Bible. I started learning to grow with my faith, fullness, and my love because I received the gift of love. And let's go ahead and and continue. Uh, Jamie, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 18 and 19. May have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. You know, I was watching a, a YouTube video, you know, when I, when I saw the scripture, um, how wide, how deep is his love, because I was watching this YouTube video, how deep is the ocean? And I saw this animation video, it, it describes how, okay, it talks about, at 2,000 feet, there was a blue whale, and then 4,000 feet, and then it can continue to 20,000 feet. Did you know, if you look at the Mount Everest, the, 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 the tallest mountain, Mount Everest, it's so tall, even the ocean, if you flip Mount Everest upside down, even the ocean is still continue to be deeper and deeper, because there's this unknown thing. You see, God's love is so great that His love is deeper than the ocean. His love is higher than the sky. I remember when I got real high school, uh, it was like a soccer game, and we saw a plane. It was way up in the sky. How plane can be up to like 38,000 feet? Because God's love is higher than in the sky. We can't understand God's love. We can't. Because the Bible says in Isaiah that His His way is, is, is different from our way. His thought is higher than and, and our thought. Our mind can't comprehend God's love. A man who died on the cross for our sins, because of Him that we receive forgiveness. Jesus already forgiven us. You know, we feel unworthy, but yet he has forgiven us. We need to receive Christ and his forgiveness. And Jamie, John 3, 16, verse 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. You know, if we think about the scripture, Pastor Rudy talked about this this morning, that a lot of times people, you know, misinterpret that scripture, for God so loved the world. Another key word, love. He gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes, that's the second word, believe, should not perish, but have an everlasting life. Because we can receive an everlasting life. I remember in John chapter 20, verse 49, Jesus, and after he got resurrected, Jesus went into a room, he saw a man of doubting named Thomas, and Thomas said, if, if you, Lord, let me dip a, a finger in your hand. But Jesus said that blessed those have not seen me, but yet believe. So we, we believe, we are believers in Christ, and so we need to receive Christ and his forgiveness, though, because this world is fading away, but yet we're going to turn our eyes upon Jesus, the fullness of joy, the earth is going to grow strangely dim. He has the light and glory and, and, and and grace. And let's, let's continue uh, reading here. Um, share God's love. To share God's love. Now, here's the greatest commandment here with, uh, here in John chapter 13, verse 34, 35. A new command I give you love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Amen. So I, I myself practice in my heart to love. You know, love is not about boasting. Love is not proud. It's not about envy. It's not about, you know, being arrogant. It's not about anger. It's not about, um, because you, you'll find this in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and love is part of the fruit of the Spirit. Because one of the, the, the first words you read in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, that love is patient. And yes, we live in a fast-paced world. This world holds fast. So many decisions we have to make, choices, you know, um, you know, roads that we got to take. See, we need to learn to live life with patience, live life, you know, to, to 
allow him, Jesus, to, to navigate our hearts. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 20, verse 4, May he fulfill the desire of your heart, may all your plans proceed. Amen. Uh, let, let's go ahead and, and continue reading. Uh, uh, number two, renew your faith. Renew your faith. God's love or for supply never empty. See, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, that may God will supply all your needs according to his riches in, in, in Christ Jesus. You know, one of the scriptures uh, that I like that prophets don't have holes. Birds, I mean, prophets have holes, birds have nets, the Son of Man does not know where to let his feet. God loves you. He wants to provide for you. You are his children. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 11, just like a shepherd carry a lamb, I carry you close to my heart. John chapter 10, that just like a shepherd call the sheep, the sheep recognize his voice and they, they follow him. And man, you know, it just brings so much peace in my heart that God will always provide for you. God will always feed you every day, just like he feeds the birds. God will always go take care of you. He'll give you clothes. He'll give you um, strength and peace what you need every single day. And let's continue reading here for number two is renew your faith. Number three is reconnect with Christ. Reconnect with Christ. And I want to give you guys an example. You guys know what we do, like gift exchange? So, so I give a gift to James, and James gave me a gift. That's called gift exchange. And what if that we give our, our burdens to Jesus? That, that we give all our, our hurts, our brokenness, our sins, everything. We can give all the gifts to him. And what the good news is that Jesus can give you new life. The gift of, of new life. The gift of love can give you that new life. And there's a scripture here. Um, um, uh, what did I put? Um, James, we first John four nineteen. We love because he first loved us. Yes, um, that should be very encouraging. He loves us. Did you know that you were you were in God's heart before the foundation of the world? Ephesians chapter one. Before he flung the stars, the galaxy, the universe, you were in God's heart. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1 to 5, I created you in your mother's womb. I have ordained you to the nation. Think about that, that God already pictured you in his heart. Before the foundation of the world, before the first star was flown, before the, the, the world was, was created, he is the Alpha and he is the Omega. Because I believe in people that God loves you. Uh, I remember when I was 17 years old, I got the very, I got my Bible the very first time, and it said, God loves letters. Man, uh, I didn't know much about the Bible. I didn't know much about the scriptures. I wanted to know Jesus. I wanted to, re to reconnect my heart to Jesus because John 8.32 says, You should know the truth. And the truth will set you free. God's word is our daily bread. So we, we may be hungry physically, but we are, we do get hungry spiritually. I remember I was listening to a man on YouTube. I think his name it was Ray Comfort. Ray Comfort did a lot of interviews with so many different people. But he interviewed a, a, a man to encourage him to read scriptures, encourage him with the, with the Bible. Man, Ray Comfort has an amazing ministry. I know he's out there in California, in Long Beach. He's out there sharing the gospel of Jesus. And let's go ahead and continue reading number four is to reconcile with Christ. James, read Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. I want to encourage you guys uh, for a, a big season of Christmas, a big season of a message of love, the gift of love, for you to know Jesus, for you to renew your, your faith, to get re reconnected, to receive Christ and his forgiveness, to reconcile your relationship, because we have redemption through him, through the blood, through Jesus. And I know, young people, we get ready to close this 2022 year. This has been an amazing year. 
I want to say thank you, James. I know you've been coming to a lot of our, our, our services all year round. I know it's been a great year that we're going to close the book. Uh, we get ready to go into a new chapter of 2023. I know we're going to have an amazing guest speaker. We have an event. We're going to do more outreaches. We're going to continue to plant seeds, you know, uh, throughout the year. So um, I want if everybody can get your chatter light ready. Um, I know uh, Dania, Dania is not able to come, so we're going to play a really quick uh, worship song before we get into the, the candlelight service. Man, thank you, Jesus. We're going to play a beautiful song called Way in the Manger. You know, we get ready to for the candlelight ceremony. If you have your candle, make sure you have it. Um, this is a, the most um, beautiful gift that we can receive. It's the gift of Jesus. The gift of Jesus. I know we've been talking about the gift of hope, faith, and love, but the most important thing is the gift of Jesus. You know, we wouldn't be here today without Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. And I know that we're going to be with him one day. We're going to be with the presence of the Lord one day. Me and, me and you, James, we're going to be in the presence of the Lord one day. We're going to be at home. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, that our citizenship does not belong here. We, uh, we, we're going to be at home with Jesus. Man, we're going to be uh, for eternity. And there are going to be two songs we're going to sing. The first song we're going to sing is uh, How Great Thou Art. And I believe young people, I mean, the sound of my voice, as a choir, we're going to sing to the Lord. My soul, my Savior God, to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art. My soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great thou art. 
I believe this is one song. We sing this every year in our Christmas banquet. I know, I mean, our Christmas candlelight service. I want to say a very special thank you to our Franco Gonzalez. And man, we're going to sing, I believe we're going to sing the song in, in heaven, just one word. to close this year of 2022 as we reflect everything and I know that God is just great in mercy and I know that he's going to continue to pour out his grace to pour out the love that God has amen and declare it in Jesus mighty name amen if you guys receive that message with me today I want to say thank you so much everybody just to join us in our candlelight service uh, thank you so much for this amazing 2022 year. I know, Jane, you've been with me for a whole year. And, man, uh, Jane, let me ask you a question, though, uh, to make it a very special one. Well, what have you learned? What, what do you think about this 2022 year of the life of the church? That it's a, it's, it's a blessing that, you know, you can, you know, you can go through Scripture and actually, you know, get into the Scripture instead of, you know, you know, th these are the things that we should be going over and, and really trying to learn better. It it uh it shows us, you know, that that's what you know that you know this is God. This is you know this is His love letter to us, and we should we should dive into it more. You know, but just to do a little summary, it's been a lot of challenges, though. You know, when I first started this church, my purpose in twenty twenty and. Even in 2021, it was very hard looking for people. I know Stephanie, she was here for 10 months to a year, and then James, you came over, and man, we're gonna continue to keep pressing forward. We're gonna continue to live with hope and and peace. Because the Bible says, I don't know, uh, James, can you, can you see that scripture, Romans 8, 28? Romans 8, 28, yes. Yeah, you can go ahead and read it. All. Can you see it or no? Uh, not really there's a glare but i'll get it for you real quick hold on romans eight twenty eight. yeah a uh, scripture for the church hold on uh, uh, you found a, uh, you yes found a... romans eight twenty eight is and we know that in all things god works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose amen and jane i want to have you the honor to close this prayer of 2022 our last service though well, James, you go ahead and okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this year, the path that you have put us on, and removing any obstacles or any things that get in our way, Lord. We pray that the next year will be just glorious, and it's going to be in your name. Whatever that you have for us, guide us, show us the way, and just, you know, give us peace. Give us, uh, you know, new beginnings. And just, you know, let us know that, you know, we that's our one thing in this world is to love you and spread the gospel that Jesus Christ he did do that sacrifice on Calvary for us and it's all in his name we thank you for everything Lord 
Remember, Christmas is not about gifts and all that stuff. It's about Jesus and all in his name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. Have a wonderful evening. I'll see you guys on January 1st. Take care.